While the focus of the post office inquiry now moves to Fujitsu's role in the scandal, one journalist who looked into claims as far back as 2015 about problems with the Horizon computer system was John Sweeney. In this clip of the Panorama investigation led by John, we heard from a whistleblower inside the computer systems firm who revealed what was really going on at Fujitsu. We also hear from postmistress Seema Misra interviewed in 2015 after being wrongly convicted and jailed for theft. The office was located in Bracknell. We were on the sixth floor, it was pretty secure. By the time we got in there, it was like Fort Knox. There was a large team employed there, 30 or so of us, and we were all full-time, and we were all pretty busy. So there were a lot, of, a lot of errors, a lot of glitches coming through. There were errors in the system? There were errors with the system. We went in through the back door and made changes. Sometimes you'd be putting several lines of code in at a time. If we hadn't done that, then the counters would have stopped working. There's no evidence that I've taken any money and then the jury came back with the word guilty. All I was had in front of me, my husband, my children, and I'm pregnant that time. What was prison like? Terrible. Terrible, it was like a nightmare. At one point I was thinking, I'm not gonna get off here alive, I'll be, I'll be dead. It is just heartbreaking still now. We're joined by Seema Misra, who was sentenced to 15 months in prison while eight weeks pregnant. And also the journalist and documentary maker, John Sweeney. You'll recognise him, of course, because we've had him more and more recently to talk about Ukraine, which is why you're still wearing your orange beanie as well in support of uh, the Ukrainians and the battle that's going on over there. We'll come on to that a little bit later on. But John was behind that panorama investigation back in 2015. Seema, thank you for coming in today. I wonder what you've made of what's happened over the last few days, what you've heard from Rishi Sunak, this sudden whirlwind in a turnaround in, in legal proceedings, in compensation. How, how are you feeling? All good. It's, it needs to happen. You know, I'm really welcoming that government decided to step in now, so which is really good. Um, if we take you back to that moment, I mean, you refused to accept that charge of theft. Yeah. The jury convicted you nonetheless, even though you weren't guilty. We could see back when John interviewed you how painful that was. How do you feel about that now when you look back on it? It's still difficult to believe that I never thought, you know, I'll be sent to the prison for the crime I never committed. I still need to come with terms with that. Otherwise, it's good. The campaign is going well. We're still fighting. I'm very happy for that. You, you, you didn't tell your children? You'd gone to prison, of course. You were concerned about protecting them. You said you had to go somewhere because they knew you were pregnant and you were pregnant. You were 10 weeks pregnant at the time. What do your children think now that they know the truth? Yeah, we told the eldest one in 2019 when the first time we won GLO, that's when we told him this is what been, we've been through. It. He couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. And he was like hard to, you know, he was really proud of us. But yeah, that kept us going. But younger one still doesn't know. But the still eldest, doesn't really know. His 12 year old, mm. same old as the uh, eldest one when I, went, I was sent away. How, so, how do you feel now about the fact? I mean, I just find it so shocking that you were sent to prison eight weeks pregnant. You thought you weren't going to come out of that prison alive. No. You had to give birth with a tag on, yeah. didn't you? I mean, it, just to have gone through that ordeal for something you didn't do. It's difficult, like, because I thought, like, I. Um, I locked myself in, I like, I'm, I'm going to kill... If I would have been pregnant, I would have killed myself. Because it's for me, it's like, I brought a sham, shame to my family going to the prison for the crime I never committed. So it was really difficult. It was really difficult. I still get, like, flashbacks and all that. But one day, time will tell, I want to get over it. You have an incredible spirit. We can see that as well. And, and clearly a bit buoyed by what's been going on. Uh, John, when we look back now, clearly that... 2015, the Panorama documentary was put together, which is sort of eight, nearly nine years ago. It has, even with that, even with the attention that you tried to bring to this scenario and what was going on, it's taken this drama now to really force the government's hand, hasn't it? Why has it taken such a long time, even with the journalism that you put together, the book that was written, the podcast that were done, why has it taken all this time for the government to really take this in hand? Well, I think the government has behaved dreadfully. What happened to Seema and her, uh, the other sub-postmasters was a monstrous crime. They were innocent, and it was to us bleeding obvious that there was something wrong with the computer. And we had a whistleblower who's yeah. saying there's something wrong with the machine. And the moment that uh, we aired our panorama, 
then it became obvious to anybody with half a mind there's something wrong, not with the people, but with the computer to fix it. And, and the government kept on not going there and believing the post office. And the post office, strike me as being, uh, at that time, was like a cult in complete denial of reality. Uh, by the way, um, both Keir Starmer and Ed Davey, um, leader of the Labour and Liberal Party, have been given a lot of stick. But actually, I think that's unfair because it's, the truth only comes out to the wider world with our panorama in August 2015. And after that, it's the Conservatives who are in power. And they made Paula Bennells a CBE. They gave her a gong while she was still wrestling with PTSD from going to prison when she's pregnant. Sim, you're laughing about that. That must have been a very surreal moment when the head of the post office is given this incredible honour, even though you have served time for a crime you didn't commit. Uh, that seems remarkable. It is. It's a different world we're living in. Uh, you know, the, the first thought that came to our mind, even when we fill any form up, even like a council tax form, you know, when we tick the boxes, it say, if you give any false information, it's a criminal offence. And there, people getting a word without having... Because they know they're involved in a scandal, they're still getting a word. That is... We don't know which remarkable. world we're living in. <laughs> How did it feel for you taking part in John's investigation? Because I guess you must have thought, someone's actually listening now. Yeah, true, because, you know, it was a, diff a very difficult decision to come into the media because it's mean, like, a wider of our own family will know because it's like, that time we were criminal. But, like, we need to come and make the... We can't let the post office get away with whatever they've done. So we... Because we suffered because it wasn't widely in media because I didn't want anybody else to suffer silently without knowing that, oh, they're the only one. That's what the post office was saying to everybody. So we need to make more awareness so more and more people know that they are not the only one behind this together. Mm. We mean, saw one of the investigators in the public inquiry yesterday um, answering questions about his behaviour and what had yeah. happened. But the whole notion of that investigation, what was that like to be under their gaze? What did they do? What did they make you do in terms of trying to find the evidence they were looking for? Oh, they didn't, they didn't do anything to try to find the evidence. They were, like, just, like, forcefully... Like, uh, I remember my first audit, when I sort of gave up in three months' time, I was like, get it sorted, otherwise I can't run the... They just came in and gave me a warning. They were, like, uh, I'm tall. They were, like, a taller than me, looked down big, and I, I called them bouncer. That's how the, that's how the feeling <laughs> I had it. I said, like, Mrs Mishra, we have so many post offices. They're doing fine. And it's just your post office you issue with. Any time you're over 500 pounds short, we'll take the post office away. And that was a shock. Did they come into your house, though, and, and search your house? Yeah, they, they did the investigation. The uh, post office investigator came to my house and searched the house. Including your son's bedroom? Yeah, 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 including son's bedroom, fridge, freezer. They moved every stuff and all that. They're done. Looking there. for hidden money? Yeah. Um, John, we've heard on a number of occasions from sub postmasters and postmistresses who phoned up the helpline for help or spoke to the post office for help and they said, it's just you. There is no one else that has these problems. And yet, clearly, someone somewhere had said, if someone phones up the helpline, if they come in, you've got to say, it's just you. That would point to someone somewhere knew what was going on. They knew. So people inside the post office knew there was a problem with the Horizon computer. And it wasn't just one person. There was also... But I... So I met Noel Thomas, um, the Welsh guy, mm. uh, who, who... Wonderful Welsh accent. They, the judge said, send... He said that to me. And he, 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 he passed his 60th birthday in prison. And, and, I, and, and when I met Jo Hamilton, so she came at me with a, um, with a, uh, with a tray full of cakes, just like in the movie. I mean, and the idea that Noel and Seema and Joe were criminals, I mean, who are you kidding? Doesn't make sense. And then well, the whistleblower says it. So people inside the post office knew that what they were saying was untrue, but there was some kind of crazy groupthink that, 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 that made them deny the yeah. truth. And they tried to stop the documentary going out. Yeah, they, they tried to. There's a story by my great colleagues, the producer Andrew Head and Tim Robinson, today's BBC website, mm -hmm. saying they tried to kill the programme and they, uh, they stopped it. There was actually... Um, the editor of the programme uh, met um, with the PR man and, um, from the post office and had six one-hour phone calls with him. 
I didn't know that. But then the editor of the programme went on holiday for six weeks and there was a story in Private Eye with a picture of the editor of Panorama and the picture caption said, has anyone seen this man? I will now confess that I put that story in Private Eye. I was saying to the editor, don't muck about. These people have suffered and their stories should go on air. That was the point I was making. Because Private Eye pursued the story as well. Yes, they were no, Private Ian too. Hislop yeah. is, um, is good. Yeah. But, there was, but what's so frustrating about this is that the evidence was there in, from 2015 onwards. We had our whistleblower. He was telling the truth, there was, the truth there was a problem with the machine and they kept on hushing it up. And then they gave Paul a... a, a then I was... A, then I was a gong. Okay. Come on. Come on. Listen, we are... The people are, who um, should have gongs are Seema are and Noel and Joe. Absolutely should be from what they've been through. Um, we, are, we are pretty much out of time, but I just... I know this is a special moment for both of you, actually, isn't it? Because it's the first time that you've met... <laughs> you gave me lots of... I was hungry. You gave me lots of biscuits. Do you remember? Oh, yes. I was starving. I'd been on the drink and I just kept... Have you got any more biscuits? I'm, I do apologise. Seema, how does it feel now being able to be reunited with John? Because, obviously, you know, it was pivotal, wasn't it, what he did? No, definitely. When I, when I heard that John is coming, I said, no, definitely I'm going to be here. <laughs> so, no, definitely I'm coming for here to, for you as well. But um, when I knew, it was... I said, wow, I haven't seen you for such a long time. I've seen him on the media and Facebook and all that, but, like, physically first time. Thank you very much. By the way, your little boy, 12, he's going to know what's going to happen. Yeah. Now. You better, you better call tell him. him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Simi, can I just ask, um, what does justice look like to you now? Because we've heard about compensation from the government, although lots of people mm -hmm. are saying that is nothing, even the £600,000. What does justice look like to you? Do you know, I've got a long list, which I wanted, like, all ticked up. But, like, in the short, I would say I definitely want Royal Mail, Post Office, UK Parliament, UK Government, e Fujitsu, and each and every person who had a part in the scandal, they need to go behind the bar. And we need to confiscate their property they'd like they did mine. And that money should be distributed among victims. And there are a lot more. We make to, need to put a right example that we are living in a safe country. We can't let anybody misuse their power and ruin people's life. Well, Seema, John, thank you so much for coming in Pleasure. this morning. We really appreciate it. Um, we have you. a statement from Fujitsu who said the inquiry has reinforced the devastating impact on postmasters' lives and that of their families. Fujitsu has apologised for its role in their suffering. Fujitsu is fully committed to supporting the inquiry in order to understand what happened and to learn from it. They're up in the inquiry next week as well, so it'll be interesting to see what there. they have to say. Absolutely. Yes. And a post office spokesperson said, we fully share the aims of the current public inquiry set up to get to the truth of what happened in the past and accountability. We are acutely aware of the human cost of the scandal and are doing all we can to right the wrongs of the past as far as that is possible. Both post office and government are committed to providing full, fair and final compensation for the people affected. So um, if you've been affected by any of the issues, then you can find all the advice and support you need on our helpline, mytv.com forward slash helpline.